Every who down in Whoville liked Christmas a lot. But the Grinch who lived just north of Whoville did not. The Grinch hated Christmas the whole Christmas season. Now please don't ask why. No, no one quite knows the reason. I think that the most likely reason of all may have, have been, been that his heart was two sizes too small. Staring down from his cave with a sour grinchy frown. At the warm lighted windows below in their town. For he knew every who down in Whoville beneath. We're now busy hanging on Mr. Toy Reese. And they're hanging their stockings. He snarled with a sneer. Tomorrow is Christmas, it's practically here. He growled with his grinchy fingers nervously drumming. I must find a way to stop Christmas from coming. Tomorrow, he knew all the Who girls and boys would wake bright and early, would rush for their toys. And then, oh, the noise, oh, the noise, oh, the noise. And then they'll do something like leave the ball. All the Who's down the Who's all touring this morning would stand close together with Christmas bells ringing. They'd stand hand in hand, and, and the Who's would start singing. They'd sing and they'd sing and they'd sing. And the more the Grinch thought of this Who Christmas thing, the more the Grinch thought, I must stop this whole thing. Why, for 53 years I've put up with it now. I must stop this Christmas from coming. But how? He got an idea, an awful idea. The Grinch got a wonderful, awful idea. I know just what to do. The Grinch laughed in his throat. And he made quick Santa Claus hat and a coat. And he chuckled and clucked. What a great Grinchy trick. With this hat and this coat, I look just like St. Nick. All I need is a reindeer. The Grinch looked around. But since reindeer are scarce, there were none to be found. Did that stop the old Grinch? No, the Grinch simply said, if I can't find a reindeer, I'll make one instead. So he called his dog Max, and he got some red thread, and he tied a big horn at the top of his head. Then he packed up some bags and an old empty sack on a ramshackle sleigh, and he hitched up old Max. Then the Grinch said, Get up! And the sleigh started down toward the homes where the Who's lay snooze in their town. All their windows were dark, quiet snow filled the air. All the Who's were dreaming sweet dreams without care. When he came to the first little house in the square, This is stop number one, the old Grinchy calls hiss, and climbed to the roof, empty bags in his fist. Then he slid down the chimney, a rather tight pinch. But if Santa could do it, then so could the Grinch. He got stuck only once, for a moment or two. Then he stood his head out of the fireplace blue, where the little Who's stockings all hung in a row. These stockings, he hissed, are the first ones to go. Then he slithered and slung for the smell most unpleasant. And around the whole room he took every present. Then he slung to the icebox and took the Who's feast. He took the Who's pudding. He took the roast beast. Then, then he stuffed all the food up the chimney with glee. And now, ring the grin, I shall stuff up the tree. The Grinch grabbed the tree and started to shove. When he heard a small sound like the coo of a dove, he turned around fast and saw a small who. Little Cindy Lou Who, who was not more than two. The Grinch had been caught by this tiny Who daughter, who had got out of bed for a cup of cold water. She stared at the Grinch and said, Santa Claus, why? Why are you taking out of this tree by? But do you know the tall Grinch was so smart and so slick? He thought of a line, he thought up quick. Why, my sweet little top? There's a light on this tree that won't light on one side. I'm taking it back to my workshop, my dear. I'll fix it up there, then I'll bring it back here. And his fifth for the child, then he patted her head. Then and he got, got her a drink, drink and sent her to bed. bed. Then he did the same thing to the other whose houses. Leaving crumbs much too small for the other whose mouths. It was quarter past dawn. Or the who's still a bed. Or the who's still a snooze when he packed up his sled. Packed it up with their presents, the ribbons, the wrappings. The tags and the tinsel. The trimming. The trapping. Three thousand feet up, up the side of Mount Crumpet. He rode with his load to the tip top to dump it. Poo poo to the who. He was grinchishly humming. Now they're just finding out that no Christmas is coming. I just know exactly what they're going to do. Their mouths will hang open a moment or two. Then he did hear a sound rising over the snow. He started in low, then it started to grow. But this sound wasn't sad. Why, this sound sounded merry. It couldn't be so, but it was merry, merry. He stared down at Hoover. The Grinch popped his eyes. Then he shook. What he saw was a shocking surprise. Every who down in Hooville, the tall and the small, was singing without any credit at all. Somehow or another, it came just the same. And the Grinch, with his Grinch feet, eyes cold in the snow, stood puzzling and puzzling. How could it be so? And he puzzled three hours till his puzzler was sore. Then the Grinch thought of something he hadn't before. Maybe Christmas, he thought, it had bought from a store.
straw. Maybe Christmas, perhaps, is something much more. And what happened then? Well, in Whoville, they say, the French small heart grew three sizes that day. And the minute his heart didn't feel quite so tired, he whipped with his load through the bright morning light. He brought back the toys and the food for the feast. And, and he, he himself, the great heart, the roast beast.